Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Make that bigger for me, Taylor. Pause. Uh, Pause. Uh, there you go. Got uh, a new body, old pussy. Damn. Why, this week's you got a new body, old pussy? This week's podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time. All in one place, all in your terms. Head to Squarespace for a free trial when you're ready to launch. Go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's start this show. Hezzy! Yes, sir. What's happening? Chilling, bro. I just saw this. I, I just saw this uh this little thing that Taylor put up there and it said new body old pussy. Let's she get brought into up it. a good no, she brought up a good point, which is a lot of people are getting their bodies done. They're looking younger. Mm -hmm. They're looking like, you know, very, with all due respect, smashable. But they're not getting their their old pussy as you have it written down there. I would never refer to it as yeah, that. I don't but even they know got what is that Taylor? This is Taylor. Taylor does a segment called "All Means that Necessary." That vintage vagina, new um, body, old pussy. What does that even mean? This okay. Well, here, this is what your boy had to say about it. Who's our boy? Vintage vagina, Gilly prehistoric poom poom. Gilly the Kid, the greatest <laughs> wow. celebrity basketball player alive. Are you ready? Okay. Big body with some old <laughs> pussy. Body newer than a motherfucker. Pussy done took 12,648 dicks. Damn. Fuck the lining out that leather jacket. Damn. That's like having a Ferrari with cloth seats, nigga. No, that, no that's like having a vacuum with no bag on it. Shit flying everywhere. What's the purpose? So all you niggas is out here that's going with looks. Oh, you just want a bitch that look good? Now you're laid up in the house with a bitch that need an oil change, a tuna. Bitch, spark plugs need to be changed. So what is Gilly saying? That you should get vaginal rejuvenation? I think if you're going to get a new body, you should also get a new pussy. And they do that. They rejuvenate vaginas. Even with that, you can't unfuck people, y'all. Yo, you, you can't unfuck people, you which can't is a good people, point. Man. That you know is a good saying? ass point. You can't point. unfuck people. Even if you rejuvenate the vagina, I still know that you fuck that person. Yeah. Why don't women believe us when we say we don't like that y'all fuck everybody? Damn. I don't think that they believe. That's not that they don't believe us. It's just that once you grow to love a person, does it matter? Now, if they tell you beforehand, you'll put that blocker up. The blocker's up. And that blocker's like, oh, I'm never going to allow myself to love this person. But if you already grow to love the person, and didn't they tell you that they fucked 1,300 people? Then they're people, a liar. They, if you never asked them. But now I have a block up because you're a liar. Damn. Yeah. So you, you so? can't win. The only way you win is you don't just stuff your vagina full of cocks every single day of the week. <laughs> don't that let that your hard? vagina be a buffet. It's, exactly. Okay, is that that a hard? Buffet. Okay. I mean, holy can't shit. Keep her, can't you can't keep a cock her. or two out of your you're vagina. Just, you're just walking the golden cock row and Bang. you want to indulge in the whole buffet. If Bang. We, if we, Bang. Or you can eat dicks. Bang. <laughs> y'all wouldn't be saying this if things were the other way around. If we what had to dip in y'all. What do you mean? What you have a dick? If we, <laughs> if I fucked 1,300 people and never told you, Taylor, and you didn't know, you should be upset. No, I'm saying if we if we were dipping in y'all. If I took 1,300 dicks. Y'all don't care if we fucked. told you Yo, after you grew to love me, that's you crazy. would not be upset. That's crazy. That's a good point. Wait, what's the question? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the same question. Yeah. Right. I took 1,300 cocks in the face. Whoa. And didn't tell you. <laughs> okay? And then you grew to love me and found out that I had 13,000 cocks in and around my anus. How would you feel? That you're gay. What are you talking about? What's wrong with that? Why can't he be Homophobe? gay? Because wow. I'm mad selfish. So you're going to try to love me and then want to have That's 30 my past. Cocks. So how do I know that you're not wanting that more? You ungayed me. You had 30 me. cuts. You're trying you to tell me that you still don't You ungayed me. Yo, you did. But also, yeah. Y'all don't want to take a compliment. You wouldn't even... <laughs> nah, that's a compliment. She liked that compliment. That's not a 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 compliment. You don't want to be able to ungay a dude? That's a great yes. point, Charlamagne. Yeah. The guy took 1,300 cocks in his it's face not, and mouth. It's not real, though. 1,300 cocks. 1,300. one vagina. One vagina completely baby. wiped away. On, I ain't gay no more. I'm delivered. I am delivered. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gay. I don't like men's. I like women's, 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 women's. They're in your anal. What does it matter? No, because. <laughs> what does it because, matter? <laughs> because that just means that the girl's just pegging him. That's it. No. No. I said cocks. cocks. 
Stop acting like you don't know what dick is. Hey, that's it. Yeah, I'm not, I can't not explain the birds and bees to you. I don't know what the fuck happened in Lower Berry. A dildo's not a cock. <laughs> what what was on. happening in Upper Darby, yo? Why you don't know these birds and the bees? What this is simple. Mean? What's your body count, yo? None your fucking business. That shit high as hell. Oh, no, it's shit. Not. That shit no, it's high not. as hell. No, Holy it's shit. Not. God damn. No, it's when, when it's low, they tell it. They tell you it's <laughs> Yeah, they right? tell it. <laughs> None of your bitches. First that of all, you know why I don't that say true. no, no. You know why I don't say no. I can say fun. none of your business. That's crazy. That's a high one. I can say. What's high? I can say three, and y'all like, oh shit. Nah, nah. Yeah, yes, that's a fucking Yo, it, lie. You know what? We go like this. Yeah, three is great. That's respectable. That's low knowledge. How many bars do y'all got? None of your fucking oh, business. Okay. <laughs> None of your business, yo. Yo, we married, yo. Yo, we married. Yeah. You're an asshole for even asking that. Yeah. He lost his virginity to his wife. You asked how many bodies. Yeah. No, he didn't. You're asking him if she did. Yeah. You did. did really? Yeah, he did. I ain't yeah, no nobody but my wife, it's Evelyn. Like, Thank you. Yo, 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 yo. God is listening to you. Stop lying. God's listening to you. I didn't lie about nothing. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. My wholeness was deleted. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. My wholeness was deleted. Come on, yo. I was unhold. What's higher? What's okay. higher? What's higher? Body count or your vision? Oh, I got 2020, 20, so definitely my vision. Oh, you got less than 20 bodies? Yes, asshole. Was 20 times 20. Why are you calling me an asshole? Because you don't act surprised <laughs> like, oh shit. I didn't know you were pro. You, you are a progressive. Liberated woman, you can do whatever you you're want. You're right, you're absolutely so right. I wouldn't but admit, again, but you I talk all this why, shit. That's what I don't know why we're talking about this because I'm on a spiritual journey. Oh, now you on a the spiritual fuck? journey. You wasn't on a spiritual journey I've at Hampton a, Homecoming last year. I wasn't you wasn't on, on no spiritual journey yeah, at Hampton like, Homecoming last like year. Was you, Taylor like Gay? Was. No, you was yes, not. Was. You was not on a spiritual no, journey. Was. No, you right. weren't. Well, guess what? You met him at the crossroads, <laughs> okay? Because you damn sure wasn't lonely at Hampton Homecoming, was you? Huh? Yo, uh, stop anyway. giggling. Yeah. Look at you giggling Damn. thinking about that Hampton homecoming. Wow. <laughs> Dude, what? You, you giggling thinking about that Hampton homecoming. <laughs> the hog? What? <laughs> that hog? <laughs> that hog? That <laughs> What is that? <laughs> What is it, Hall? She know what that is. <laughs> what is that? She was on that spiritual journey, <laughs> and she ain't had it in a while. So when you put it in, she went. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to give him that scream at first. <laughs> at first not at first. She didn't want to give him that scream at first when she hit him with the. <laughs> That's selfish, yo. That is. You're not going to give the man is. a scream? You're not going to give him an ouch? What? You're not going to give him a slow down it hurts? That's what it is. Yo, give him a slow down Damn, it hurts. Know that's yo, what that is. yo. I've never heard it. Stop lying. Because you've done it. Did you really do that? Which is a close. That was not it. That's fucked up, yo. Pick up your mic. Yo, yeah. pick up your mic. Look at you falling all over the place. Oh, shit. That is so funny. Because you know it's true. Yeah. That's why. Yo, do you really do that? Doing all it. women do that. You no, cheat dudes not. out of moans? We only do that if the dick is big. Let's be very clear. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so it wasn't big at Hampton Homecoming? I am not. I'm on a spiritual journey. He was. <laughs> yeah. back on the spiritual journey. Yo, you got you fucked. <laughs> Yo, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You got Yo. fucked by a big old dick. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to act like you didn't, but you did. Big Yo. huge fucking dick went in you. Oh, my God. Oh my you got God, fucked. Man. It happens. <laughs> she did, right? It happens. That's what we're all pretending like yeah, it didn't happen. <laughs> but a huge giant black My. dick went in you. <laughs> 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 you see her like she's a guy. <laughs> like, like, like a guy. Yo, if you don't make noise when you fuck, you a guy. Mm. <sighs> um, That's better. <laughs> that's all we want. That's, that's, all, we want, that's all you gotta do. Yo. That's all we want. Put some what? volume on it. <laughs> yo, we, we don't judge exhales. We need some volume. No, but that's what men need to be listening to. Listen to the breaths, my brothers. Yes, y'all listening for words and uh, no, listen for the breath. The yeah. breath tells the story, man. No, the words are fire too. The breath. 
The breath and all of this. Watch for this. Watch what this is doing. What watch is that how, doing? This your, your stomachs. No, watch how it just goes up, goes down, <laughs> goes up, goes down. What you putting in there? If you're, eating, if you're if you're down there giving your woman, um, you know, uh, cunnilingus, cunnilingus. You know what I'm saying? Just watch how this. Watch what this does. What? Is, how are you making it go like that? It does it on its own. See, Breathing into it? Y'all don't, pay, no, y'all don't pay attention to women's bodies, man. Well, how do you look at the y'all, stomach while you're eating pussy? Yeah. Clearly, y'all not paying attention. How do you look at a woman's <laughs> stomach while you're eating pussy? Open your eyes. <laughs> you know, like, the pussy's no, underneath. What? 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 Underneath what? Underneath what? This glow is down here. No, it's right there. It's yeah, all, like, like, all you got to do is look about? up. Just look Say up. Say you don't have to eat pussy. That's it. That's I do not eat pussy. Are you sure? How else do y'all eat pussy? How do you eat pussy when you're in a room? I don't eat pussy. I'm a pillow princess. What does that mean? That means I that she gets it. it. Oh, you ate it? Taylor, whole man. Yeah, you are a dude. You're a man. That's why yo. I tease you like a dude, because you're a dude. <laughs> you're a dude with like big, huge black cocks in Washington, D.C. You really wanted a homie. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted a boy. Wanted a do you dap deal. a dude up after a second? Like, he hits it good? Whoever you got up there, let's dap some up. No, but do you dap a dude up? Taylor, yo, sex? stop yeah. destroying yeah. everything like yeah. a guy. <laughs> you dap dudes up after. I can see Taylor doing that, like, oh, what's up? Yo. Taylor be like, Taylor, roll up blunt. What you getting into? <laughs> don't don't even pass the blunt to the dude. She just sitting there taking it to the face. So, what your shit? What you getting into? I'm going to need it from the back for like 10 strokes. <laughs> <laughs> I had a long day. I had a long day. Actually, I'm gonna need it from the back. I'm gonna need it from the back. I'm actually very affectionate. Thank you very much. I didn't say you're not affectionate. How's that wide on the the camera to Taylor Bull in a China shop? (laughs) Yo, salute all the big back girls. You know what I'm saying? The big back brigade. What's up with the big back brigade? Why are you saying that? Huh? Why did you start saying that? Because springtime is right around the corner and it's already March and I'm noticing that the big back brigade ain't getting, ain't, ain't y'all not focused. What's, is that Taylor Swift's? What is big back for the <laughs> Just big, the people with big backs, men and women, okay? Holiday's still on you. You got those pounds on you. You're still eating crazy now. Spring is right around the oh, corner. Oh, 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 You got to lose weight. They're fat. Yes, <laughs> big back brigade. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, yo. What are we doing? I need the big back brigade <laughs> to get focused, okay? Spring is right around the corner. All right, you'll be in t-shirts in no time, and everybody gonna be looking at you like, God damn! So get it together, okay? New body, new back. Did you see Donnell <laughs> Rollins? Who are you talking to? And Corey Holcomb? <laughs> huh? Yo, <laughs> play the clip, Taylor. This is so interesting. I don't know what's going on in black comedy this year, yo. I know it is a little combative for no reason. Like, what is going on? Listen, listen, just be fair. Hold on, I want to say something before we start this. Yeah. These are two of the funniest people on the planet. They really are. This breaks my heart if they're beefing. Don, no, it's actually this is actually a good one. Only because I think Donnell Rollins is Donnell is funny. He's hysterical. Listen to me. I ain't talking about just stand-up. Just as a dude, he's Donnell funny. is a human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just funny. Yeah. Donnell can walk in a room and I'm already laughing. That's it. Which is one of the reasons he gets upset with me. And i I don't know if I've ever told the story. One time, Donnell got so mad at me, and it took me at least 30 minutes to realize he was really mad. Nah. (laughs) Yeah. So what happened? Because he was pouring his heart out to me and trying to talk to me about how I don't take him serious enough. (laughs) And he wants, just wants for me to sit down and have a real conversation with him during the interview, you know, talk to him the way I talk to any other comedian, (laughs) take him serious. It took me 30 minutes to realize he was not playing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So he's just a funny person to me. Corey, hands down, one of the funniest people on the goddamn planet. Hysterical, yo. Just don't hysterical. give a flying fuck. Love fucking Corey. Corey don't give a fuck about what comes out of his mouth. Corey got legendary he really, jokes. He got chill, though. Bruh. Sometimes. Yo, he has some legendary I was jokes. at a Corey Holcomb show one time, man, in Jersey. This was some years ago. He do Cor- the, he do speak, the, speaking of new pussy. He do the abortion clinic one? I don't remember the abortion clinic one. I remember yeah, the one where he was man. like, he was t- he was on stage and he was like, yeah, man, you know, nowadays they got that, that vaginal rejuvenation. You know about vaginal rejuvenation, right? He said, yeah, man, make your, make your pussy brand new like before your uncle put his finger in it. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, he just took off running. Like, he said it and just ran. You know how Monique be running now? Yeah, yeah. Corey just ran. He just ran off stage. Oh, my God. Bro, he had a joke. He goes, uh, he goes, 
He goes, I found out. He goes, fellas, I found an abortion clinic with pool tables in it. He said, yeah, while my girl was healing up, I was playing the doctor. Won all my money back. <laughs> God damn. God damn. That's good. <laughs> he just got bars, dude. No, man. Corey is a fucking fool. The 5150 show him. Corey right, so, so wait, why Corey. are they beefing, though? I don't know. Let's play it. Let's play it. Let's see. Let's see. Donald Rollins confronts Corey Holcomb during his set at the Laugh Factory. This is from Hollywood Unlocked. Let's hear what happens. This be fair. Fair conversation. No, 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 no. Let's be fair. Let's be fair and real. You say you keep it 100. You know how I get that. Hey. 32. I rip. You rip lights? I rip. You, you, you ask any that would see me ball. Anybody. And you ask anybody that don't know me. I keep it gangster. I don't, I don't say you No, you try to say I'm a bum. I ain't no bum. No, I didn't say that. And that saw. That saw. Yo, money is mild. <laughs> you know what you're doing now? You're a provocateur. You know how to excite people. Ain't nothing mild about my. We don't look at you. Ain't nothing. You was at the mall and put you out with your hot dog in your hand. That's the worst feeling, people. Go to the next one. That's the next one. No. Yeah, we just saw this. We one. saw Go. this. Go to. The... And guess what? And guess what? You can say what you want to say. You can say what you want to say. You calling me a mild comic is totally off. So you a strong comic. I'm a beast. I'm a beast. I'm a beast. I'm a beast. That's right. Go to the TMZ article, Taylor, because that shit is funny. Wait, what happens? You got to read. That's it. You got to read the TMZ article about Donnell this. is a beast, though. Donnell is hilarious Donnell is a fucking stage. Beast. But I don't know what? why they're beefing. But that's... calling somebody mild is hilarious. I mean, that's like when Duval used to call people basic. Yeah. You tell somebody your comedy is mild. What the fuck does that even nah, mean? Nah, Corey's a sniper. <laughs> yeah. Corey got it. Hey, it takes one Corey, word. Corey don't even know. He just gave me, he get, I got Donnell's next trick. <laughs> nah, Don, he hey, up. Donnell got a stand-up special coming out February Don't 27th. you dare. Don't Hit you dare. Hit me on Breakfast Club in the next couple weeks. I have a... Don't you dare. Why did he say anything? Because he, he can't do nothing to stop it. <laughs> okay? He, he, the Corey has given me my new stunt for Donnell Rollins. <laughs> stop it. I already know what I'm going to do. Stop. We can bleep it, right? <laughs> Donnell texted me yesterday. No, I saw him post on his story, his special. I mean, you know, he was like, February 27th, comedy special coming out. And I just hit him in the DM. I put, looks mild. <laughs> what did he say? What did he say? He replied back, Corey to God. <laughs> That's his best. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. You got to read this. Make it bigger, Taylor. Pause. This shit is so funny. All right. No, no, scroll down. Scroll down. Uh, da, da, da. Not there. Scroll up some more. Scroll up. Straight. Like, oh, oh, go back. Okay. Go back. Go Donnell back. tells TMZ. Okay, no, scroll back go, up. Scroll back up. Scroll yeah, back up. Yeah. yeah. This wild scene unfolded Sunday night at the Laugh Factory here in L.A. where Donnell went up to do a set and Corey went on after him when we're told he started hurling wild claims and barbs at Donnell and Dave Chappelle's expense. Scroll up. This is so funny. Donnell tells TMZ he wasn't going to let Tory, Corey torch his close friend. The two of them were on Chappelle's show together back in the day, so he confronted him over it. That argument is what you see here on video obtained by TMZ with Donnell going absolutely ballistic on Corey, whom you can hear calling Donnell Rawlings mild and a lame, funny man. This is where it gets real good. Scroll up, though. Scroll up. Scroll down. Scroll down. No, up, down. You know what I mean, Taylor. Go there further. Go, right there. You can also hear... Corey questioning Donnell's street cred, and Donnell was ready to defend himself and his rep, which he did from the audience level right in front of everybody. Indeed, it must have been pretty surreal to see play out live. Now, Donnell claims another inflammatory comment that Corey made played into how angry he got. Namely, Corey allegedly saying that anyone in comedy who has three movies or more under their belt has had to perform fellatio <laughs> on someone in the bitch. Now, scroll up. That might be the clip right there. The reason Donnell says he got as fired up in addition to feeling insulted and hearing his friends get insulted is because he has three movies. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> he insists he's never done anything like that in his career. <laughs> yeah. Yo, play that clip. 
Clip see if that's Corey talking about. Yeah, you're Clip evil. Yeah. You're, you're evil, hard, son. Son. You're evil. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, you suck? suffer from dry skin? Oh, Dandruff. that's what I thought it said. Son, that <laughs> shit is crazy. <laughs> Perfect advertisement. My day smell be bombing like a motherfucker. I'm just keeping it real, dog. <laughs> I have watched whenever they say, hey, everybody, guess what? Special guest, Dave Chappelle. I'll be like, oh, damn. <laughs> it's gonna be hot garbage for at least an hour. Hour, maybe two. I'm just keeping it real. I'm not trying to shit on the brother, but he needs to understand you throwing your weight around too much, man. Standing up there smoking with them irregular shirts on, <laughs> bombing all the time. Dave Chappelle is absolutely great in movies. Great. I didn't say good. I said great. The motherfucking Nutty Professor, them scenes where he was in them movies with Martin, when Dave Chappelle is in a movie, man, Dave Chappelle kill that shit. We was talking about it before we came on. The Chappelle show was so good and entertaining. The Chappelle show, they were selling it in the barbershops. It's a TV show. They were selling the TV show in the barbershops. Give Dave Chappelle his flowers. But stand up, God dang! <laughs> this, this man has so much power because of what he's done in movies and TV that he can go in any comedy club they're gonna put him up because he's Dave Chappelle and I promise you, this man is about to do a say no to comedy speech for as long as he up there. It's just nobody has the courage to say nothing. Cause it's Dave Chappelle, but Dave Chappelle be bombing like a motherfucker. Now I've watched Dave Chappelle specials. Out of every five specials, two of them are good. Two of them are good. But go ahead, D. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I didn't want to. I don't. I don't want to hog it all. But I'm just saying, nobody has the courage to say this. The only person who said something was Faison Love about him being. A little overrated. What's happening in black comedy, yo? <laughs> What's happening? I really don't know. I mean, I think that, honestly, I That's thought that not... was fair critique. Nah, dude. That, Dave, I mean, dude, that, Dave is it. fucking a hilarious stand-up comic. That's fair critique from like Corey. How so? Because... He's giving them props, saying, "Look, you're, no, no, but he's, he's, you're, you're phenomenal at stand-up. But, oh, but that could be true. He's in the stand-up. He's like, yo, you're good at acting, you're good at sketches, but you're not good at stand-up. But, but what if he, Corey really thinks he's not that good at stand-up? Yeah. You think he's because, because, because his own because, man. Because the opposite his be, own man, that's his decision. The but. opposite can be said about somebody like Rock, right? You can say Rock is phenomenal at stand-up. But Rock, movie-wise, might not be the greatest. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love, even though I love top five, right? Yeah. I thought he was phenomenal in New Jack City. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, personally. Right? Yeah, no, Chris isn't the best actor. But that's but, what I'm saying. So, like, I, 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 don't when think, you're I a, think that's fair critique. No, nah, but when you're a stand-up, that's the thing you care most about. Acting? No, stand-up. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, so, gotcha, so gotcha. saying you're good at another thing, but you're not good at the thing that you care the most about, it, it, it obviously hurts. Now, I will say that there was a time where it didn't seem like Dave was telling too many jokes. I, I think I've said that. I, I remember... Going to see him when he came out, uh, when Kevin and Chris did the, the garden, hmm. and he came out, and I was happy that he was up there telling jokes. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Because yeah. the last few times I had saw him before, he was kind of just talking. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So it was good to see him telling jokes. Now, uh, man, even prior to that, when he did Sticks and Stones, when he was in that Sticks and Stones era, fantastic. Crazy. But there was a time even before that where he would just get on stage and kind of just talk. Yeah. That's what I think Corey is talking about. Now, I've never seen Dave bomb. That's like, a, you don't bomb when you Dave Chappelle. That's also the thing. Is like, and again, maybe Corey sees him more because he's in L.A. I yeah. don't know. But like, whenever I've seen him, he's getting laughs. And also, this is another thing. It's not like he can just go work out material at some random place and nobody knows he's there. Anytime he yeah. goes and works out material, it's a fucking thing. And you're expecting a special you're not expecting oh yeah here's my new shit 
But yeah, I don't know. I, that, that and I just also said, just like to that hear Dave talk. Weird. That seems weird coming from Corey, man, because Corey's like a real comic. He's like a like an actual enthusiast of comedy. Like he writes great jokes, so you would think that he would appreciate Dave, who also has great jokes. I, that seems well, weird. Maybe to that's me, why. Man. That's why you got to take his critique a little different than just the average person on Twitter talking shit. No, of course you take it different because you're a comedian, but it also just makes me go like, I don't know, something else going on. Is there, is there a beef? Is there? I didn't, I didn't. I, personally, when I watched that Corey clip, just now, I didn't see any malice. You know what I mean? I didn't. None. I, I personally didn't. You saw malice in that clip? Yeah. Why? Yeah, I don't think you have to say somebody bombs. You could just be like, maybe he's not hilarious every time, but to say that. He goes up there for an hour and bombs. What if he saw him bomb? I don't. I mean, I don't know. I didn't see it, so I don't. I don't know what Corey saw to be able to say that. I didn't. You know, I don't know. I've never seen Dave Chappelle bomb. Yeah. You know, I'm. A, but I'm also a person who's just always interested in Dave Chappelle talking. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I also yeah. understand the art of stand up. So if you're gonna get on that stage, mm -hmm. I want to see stand up. You know, if I want to hear you just talk, I listen to Midnight Marauders. You know what I mean? I want right. the, the podcast. Right. So maybe that's what uh, Don, uh, uh, Corey is saying. I wanted to hear the part where Corey said that if you stuck more than, if you had been where in more than three that? movies, that I don't know. <laughs> so we listen to that whole shit. But I, just don't, I want to know why Donnell is volunteering that information. So Donnell said, out of nowhere, I did three movies. That's what the TMZ shit said. I just yeah. read it. I don't understand what <laughs> happened. Donnell is fucking funny, yo. Donnell is hilarious. On stage, off stage, Donnell needs his own Kirby so enthusiasm. What do you think's happening in in, uh, in black comedy where there's a lot of slander being thrown around? Like, what what's going I, on? I, I really don't know, and the reason I really truly don't know is because I don't even understand where this is coming from. Because this is not like it's not like it's a a, 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 a area where all of these people aren't eating. All of these people are making money and have been making money for years. So then if it's Corey not about Oakland, money... Donnell, Cat Williams, Moni, any of these people every weekend can go sell out comedy clubs. Some so, of them are selling out theaters. So what do you think it is? Maybe some of them feel like they should be further on. They feel like some people who are further on shouldn't be. No, I just think, Kat, I, honestly, I think Cat set the tone. Yep. And then it just, it, it, it what? It was like a thing that got attention, so everybody else is copying it? Yep. We, when I talk to comics, certain people... Um, salute to my man Rob Stapleton. I'm I'm only bringing this up because Rob has had a TV show concept about everything you're seeing now mm. for years. Mm. Like Rob has shown me this concept, and honestly, when I'm looking at it, I'm like, this ain't really happening in the comedy world, right? But now mm. you're seeing it. Yeah, like these motherfuckers really be having like smoke with each other. It's a it's pretty cutthroat. Yeah. yeah. But I don't understand why, because all of them are working. Like there's, like it's, it's, they, they, I think it's like rappers, but like it's the, yeah. like a competition thing. Yeah, but rappers and do that shit when the, they not who's hot. The best. Most most of the time, rappers do shit like this when they not hot. Yeah, these people are all nah, eating. Drake and Kendrick been shooting shots at each other. They've been number. That's because they're the best. I'm just saying. That, that so usually happens. People with take the best. shots at all different levels. I think a lot of times what happens is that, uh, and I don't know if it's this situation, but like people maybe weren't treated the kindness the kindest on the way up. Mm. And now when you have a little something and you see another person, one of your peers who wasn't that nice to you on the way up, being exalted like they're the most generous, you know, godly human being on the planet, and you're like, nah, fuck that. That guy's a fucking dick. Now, I don't know. I don't know their situation. And it could just be like, yo, this is clout. I mean, it's great. Uh, it's great attention for uh, Donnell's special that's coming out. I mean, to have a TMZ story go viral. Uh, that's the first thing I thought. I was like, yo, did they set this up so Donnell could have something for the the special? We like, did too, but one of my first questions for Donnell... Yeah. Oh, is this it? I, I think so. I just try to... <laughs> this the one? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> no, it's on there. Corey's another one that's just funny. I think he said it on stage before, uh, Donnell. What? So Donnell was up right before him. Oh, I love that. And so then... Corey comes on right after. Oh, so you got to respect that. Yeah. Come on, yo. You got to respect that. He's I, in the building. He just left the stage. I, don't, I know you back there listening to me. I don't respect it because he can't get back on. 
I actually think it's But he can do corny. that with Donnell. That's some old dirty but, bastard shit. But now he had to stop the show. Mm. Donnell should have went on stage, though. Yo, if you went on stage, you guys had the banter. That's one thing. And I do respect that because it's like, yo, you know that he can't get back on stage. So you basically get in the last laugh and that guy can't defend himself. So I like the fact that Donnell said something. So Because yeah. you want to climb the comment goes before you and he cannot physically go back on stage. He has to stop the show in, in order to defend himself. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean... I mean, it's interesting, right? Because, like I said, I, I feel like Cat set the tone. But you know the illest thing about Cat Williams? Cat ain't said a word since. Hmm. <laughs> well, he, not, he he did. He went on one more. He did... Um, what yeah, are the... I, I can't remember. What, Willie what, D? Yes. yes. Well, I think Willie D was before. Oh, really? I don't know. I, it felt like Willie D was before. Oh, wow. He was before. Yeah, it felt like Willie oh, D had pre-taped and it, that before. And it got traction yeah, after yeah, the... Yeah, oh, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he doesn't need to. Like, you heard him. He he made the splash. You know, if anybody anybody that is uh, has a, you know, a, a brain at all for entertainment watched it and goes, holy shit, this guy, when he talks, it's really funny. And uh, he has a comedy tour going on. I'm going to buy all those yeah. fucking tickets. The only thing Cat tried to defend was the fact that he can run a goddamn 4-2 at 50-something years old. <laughs> That's the only video we saw. He didn't react to nothing right. else. Nobody <laughs> said. He just put out a video of him running a 40. What is, Donnell, what is this? this? I think Donnell's talking about... Man, if this is Donnell talking about three dicks, let me see it. And Corey's about the performance, and I know that he had said some ill things about Dave Chappelle. I know he said some ill things about some of the openers of Dave Chappelle. So I just sat there Wanted just to see what his take on what he felt about comedy or whatever. I sat there and I sat there and I just waited. And then when he made the comment about that anybody that's done three movies in comedy has performed fellatio, um, I said, wait a minute, I've done three movies, right? And I've never been accused of that. And then I also fact checked his IMBD. And Corey himself has done four movies. So I don't think, I think he might be guilty of his own joke. It's unfortunate it came to this. Should I have yelled out at him? No. But, you know, I'm a very, you know, I've been you got rocking. Dick I got movie shows? Years. I'm a little guy to my friends, my family. I mean, I do family. it. How many have you been? Just, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't know. I've done a few, but I never had to suck dick. I, I think that's a, that's one of those things that, like, we always assume women did, but not men. But there has been this thing that has always existed in, it. like... No, it's exists, it. it exists within, like, the black community where it's, like, if you get on... I hate it. But it's a black thing. Like, when white dudes get on, people don't go, oh, yeah, Nobody it's a says dick nothing. to get on. Or, or they just assume y'all like sucking dick anyway. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I yeah. know a guy right yeah. now... Yeah. yeah, we're gay for pleasure. I, I know <laughs> guys are gay for Hollywood. I know yeah. a guy right now who is one of the most incredible songwriters uh -huh. I've ever met. Yeah. And I think he produces. Yeah. Does he produce? Does he do the beats? Wait, wait, wait. No. Who? Oh, okay. Well, he he's one of the most phenomenal songwriters. What type of Song music? and hooks. Rap, like, and R&B. Yeah. Party? No. no. Huh. And this guy is gay. Wow. So why isn't he on? <laughs> if you got the talent... Because he wants to do it. Yeah. <laughs> they want to break you. Yeah, they want to break you. Damn. Damn. That's how they own you. Once Damn. you do some foul shit... I mean, I don't believe this, but like once you do some foul shit and they got you doing it, now they can tell you to do whatever the fuck you want or yeah. they want. And yeah. you're going to do it or else they're going to tell you you're sucking dick to be a nutty professor. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> done, what? <laughs> <laughs> sucking dick to be a nutty professor? Oh. <laughs> you got nutted on to be a nutty professor. Yo, imagine getting nutted on to be a nutty professor. <laughs> yo! Yo, wild, yo, yo, if you fucked a professor at a school Just and a you nutted on him, would you call him that? Yeah, you nutty professor. Yeah. Would you have nutty professor in your phone? Imagine you fucked a professor in their classroom and you nutted all over him. And then that's what you put their name in there for in your phone. Ad. <laughs> nutty professor. Yo, this guy's crazy. <laughs> Son, this guy's crazy. He's, he's, still, in, yeah. he's still in Calabasas, oh, bro. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. He's He's still, in, oh, he's still in the mountains of Calabasas man, right now. That is so fucking crazy, man. Yeah, but salute to Tondell. Watch his special February 27th. Salute to Corey Holcomb. Watch the 5150 show. Corey funny as shit to me, man. I just want Corey. I want Corey and Jess to piece it up. If I can get Corey and Jess to piece it up, that'd be great. Oh, why are they beefing? I, they, they've, been, they've been beefing for years. I don't, I don't know. know. 
I don't know. I don't uh, know this. Uh, what else we got, Taylor? Um, Doja Cat. Doja oh, actually, Cat. no, no. Before Doja Cat, because it's new, Killer Mike, he was trending off of his show. Hey, yo, get off Killer Mike dick. <laughs> All of y'all out there. Like, y'all really do not... Y'all be on social media mad at Killer Mike because of his opinions, because of, you know, how he chooses to show up and impact his community. Like, relax. This is the cost so of success. The cause, of, and he just gets these three amazing Emmys, right? He got yeah. the sweep. Grammy. Oh, sorry, Grammys. And he gets the sweep. But this is the cost of success. It's like once you're put on that pedestal, people can make a lot of money trying to take you down. Exactly. It's really it's really just what it is. And like I, if he was an independent rapper that was selling, you know, I don't know, 20,000 copies an album. He was. No, I guess nobody for, gave a fuck. Exactly, because you can't get the clicks out of <laughs> That's it. Now right. That's you right. can get the clicks. Now that you can actually make money. You can make money shitting all over that successful dude y'all be so mad because your little social media narratives don't work in real life <laughs> yeah. you get on social media and you paint these narratives about people you don't know killer mike you don't know michael render at all you don't know shit about him but yeah. because he did something that you don't like which is go talk to the fucking governor of his state right now all of a sudden you want you create this narrative about killer mike that don't exist and to your point shows you got to watch him be exalted because that's what God does. God will prepare a table for you in front of your enemies, right? You got to watch him be exalted for this phenomenal album that he put out, mm -hmm. win three Grammys, mm -hmm. and you get to see how much love he actually has in the community, and it drives you fucking crazy. Yeah. So now you're digging up old clips from a fantastic show. To discredit him. That every, but everybody should go watch Killer Mike's Trigger Warning. It was a great show that was on Netflix. Mm -hmm. I don't. It should come back for another season. I'm not even going to play this clip. You know I'm not going to play the clip? Because it's out of fucking context. I used to watch this show. I I, I, go watch the show. First of all, the show is satire, yeah. number one. And it's called Trigger Warning, you fucking digital dickheads. Yeah, yeah. So you took a clip out of context... To try to make Mike look away yeah. based off a show that is satire and it's called Trigger Fucking Warning. You're fucking insane. But the you comments, guys are insane. The comments were backing him up though, wasn't it? Yeah. Because I'm sure mad people yeah. actually watch the fucking show <laughs> instead of these digital dickheads whose intention it is is to try to make Killer Mike look fat. But don't, but don't people know that now? Like, aren't people aware? Of this? I don't think they care. Cause what else did they do on social media? Shows? No, I'm saying like the public. Like they might indulge in it, but they also understand the the, the social media economy. The social media yeah. economy is like there's clicks and there's views and shitting on the most popular people. So if you want to get views, you do it. And I feel like if you're someone who's on social media enough, you'll see it and you'll yeah. look at it through that lens. Like people aren't stupid enough to just believe that there's somebody out there who really cares about taking down Killer Mike. The person who made this doesn't care at all about Killer Mike. They just see a successful person, they're like, how can I take him down? I, it's I, like it's like Me Too or cancel culture or any of these things. It's, it's no different the people that do this kind of shit, in my mind. I agree with you, I think it's a combination though. I think in this case, people are really upset over Killer Mike's political views. And if you think MAGA has fanatics that will do anything for Trump, these motherfuckers love Massa Biden. Mm. Oh, they love Massa Biden and these goddamn Democrats so much. So when when Killer Mike gets on Bill Maher and he doesn't want to tell you who he he doesn't want to endorse anybody. Mm. When he goes on the View mm. and he don't want to endorse nobody, and now all of a sudden he's he's public enemy number one. But yeah. if you just simply listen to Mike, you stupid fucks, yeah. listen to him with the intent to understand. So what if you don't want to endorse nobody? You know what he says? Look, man, I supported Bernie Sanders. So you should what? Just turn that up. Oh, yeah. He did. said, he said, look, I supported Bernie Sanders. So go look to the candidate who's mostly aligned with Bernie Sanders' progressive agenda. Hmm. And that's who you should support support. He said, hey, I supported Keisha Lance Bottoms, you know, in Atlanta. She's part of the Biden administration. I think you should look to the people that I've supported and look who they're with and maybe support them. What is that telling you, Schultz? Hmm. What does that say to you? That he's a logical actor. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That's it. I don't have to tell you, A, go out there but there's and vote no for anybody. But there's no logic to this reaction outside of people want clicks or people just want to destroy him because he disagrees with their POV. That's it. And guess what? You can't destroy somebody like Michael Rinder because you didn't create Michael Rinder. Mm. Michael Rinder was Michael Rinder way before you knew motherfuckers got here. Yeah. Fuck y'all. Suck my dick for Killer Mike. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay? <laughs>
Suck my dick. All but right? Mike's also aware of this. Like, this is not surprising to Mike. Like, he understands that this is the cost of success and the cost of, like, political activism. The cost is you're going to have to deal with the people that, one, resentful of your success, and two, disagree with your, you know, your opinions. That's why a lot of people... Like, what often happens, I think, is as people get more successful, they just kind of, like, tuck behind a political ideology because as long as they just regurgitate what that side cares about, they have the protection of the side. Yeah, yeah, it's like what yeah, happens yeah, yeah, to yeah. a lot of the people in Hollywood, right? It's just like, it's hard to be an individual. You gotta read everything. And half the shit you read is fake or there's a little bit of misinformation or it's skewed in one way. It's fucking hard. And especially if you're someone that's like in front of the camera and you gotta have an opinion every single fucking day. So what the easier thing to do is, is just go, you know what? I'm liberal or I'm conservative. I don't have my own point of view. Look how much shit you're getting just for not riding with the Democrats 100%, right? Yeah, because I got, as John Stewart said, because I got eyes, ears, and a brain. <laughs> and I'm observing 100%. and listening. 100%. And my brain is processing. And I'm like, no, that ain't right either. This ain't right, but yeah. that ain't right either. But your life would be so much easier if you just went along with everything that the Democrats said because the Democrat Party and the people that believe in the Democrat Party would just support you and protect everything that you do. That's our guy. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people just take the easier way out, especially if they're not politically active. Like, if you're just some random Hollywood actor, right? Yeah, yeah. If you're just some random Hollywood actor, let's say, for example, right? Why would you... And you don't care about politics at all. And you know having the wrong political opinion could cost you your job. Yeah. You could cost you commercials. It could cost you your future dreams and goals. Of course, you're just going to be like, hey, I agree with whatever the side in charge here agrees with. Because you don't give a fuck about that other stuff, right? But you, you actually care. You're invested. So you're going to have a more nuanced opinion. And there's one thing that the fucking both sides hate. The, the thing that the both sides hate more than anything in the world are nuanced opinions. Man. Because they expose both of them. Man. That's why, but by the way, that's why nuanced opinions cut through. That's why when I'm watching Fox News and I see somebody, what's Jessica's last name, Chris? You remember Jessica's last name from Fox? Oh, uh, it starts with a C, but I can't remember. Damn, what's Jessica's last name? I want to shout Jessica. Jessica is very nuanced mm -hmm. on Fox News. What's Jessica's last name, man? Let me see if I can find Jessica's okay, last Google, name. Google, Jessica. Tarloff. Oh, Tarloff, yeah. Yeah, Jessica oh. Tarloff. Salute to Jessica Tarloff. She's very nuanced. You know what I'm saying? 100%. I like watching that. Um, not too many people on a lot of other networks that are nuanced. Like, not, not to me anyway, you know, and maybe it's... They're not allowed to be because of uh, I, Joy Reid. I think Joy Reid is, is, I think Joy Reid is nuanced to a certain extent. I don't know enough about you it. You know what I mean? But I like people who can literally call bullshit on yeah. both sides. Yeah, I think that's what people really appreciate about Jon Stewart. <sighs> they, they got mad at him last week because they said he was uh, practicing both sidesisms or whatever the fuck. First of all. If you're absolutely doing what you're saying, mm -hmm. which is being nuanced and being objective, of course you're going to critique both sides. That's why, I, like, I go back to what Corey said about Dave. I respect that because he was critiquing everything. He didn't say Dave Chappelle ain't funny. He didn't say that. He, he didn't say Dave Chappelle's whack. He said Dave Chappelle is great in movies. For not, sketch comedy show was classic. I just don't really care for his stand-up. He didn't exactly say that. I think there was some hate in there, bro. I didn't hear it. I'll be honest with you. I didn't, I didn't hear where the hate Kate came into play. I heard a very nuanced take on a legend. Mm. You know? I, I, yeah, I just also think there's a perfect example where it's like, yeah, Chappelle's the top dog right now, so there's clicks and saying that he sucks. Yeah, that's the question. Yeah. Chappelle's a legend. Yeah. Icon. Yeah. Mount Rushmore. But is he top dog right now? Yeah. Still? Okay. Yeah. He's top dog right now. What and, determines that? I mean, there's a lot of different ways. It's ticket sales, excitement around special, like uh the 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 weight of a point of view. You was know? there was there a lot of excitement around Dave's last special? When what something else happened like right around Cat Williams? Oh yeah, Cat really squashed that. <laughs> Cat, Cat Williams. Yeah, Cat really. Cat. Yeah, that's it, what I'm saying. Yeah, the Cat really squashed that. But that being said, it's like there is. Put it this way: there's more clicks and views in saying that he isn't good than there is at saying some random comedian isn't good. 
and there's less clicks and views in saying that he's great than there are in saying that he's bad. I don't even know if that's a hot take nowadays because 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 of Dave's content, the last few specials. Right. There have been a lot of people who have been saying that about Dave. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like now, now, don't get me wrong. Some of these people are just. They 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 upset about the things he says about trans people. So sure. they are like, oh, Dave's shit is whack. He's a whatever, whatever. Like I've seen some really harsh article articles on Dave. But the reason I'll take Corey opinion over all of those other people yeah. is because he's Corey Holcomb. You know what I mean? And he has a a a, a great record and resume in the comedy world. Yeah. You know? And but I mean, I got my own opinion. I don't I think Dave is good on stage. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that I think Sticks and Stones is phenomenal. Yeah. You know? That's probably my favorite Dave Chappelle special ever. Yeah. But yeah, Dave is f probably funnier in sketches. I like Dave in just I think I like Dave in regular conversation. The sketches were incredibly impactful. I like Dave when he's just doing an interview. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I I I I I get it. I yeah, get it. It's a, listen, it's hey, it's always tough when you hear it from a comedian, you know? That's the thing. And Corey's a respected comedian. Like, he's, he's in a lot of ways a comics comic. So that's where things are get, get sticky, mm -hmm. you know? But actually, I don't know. It's so weird. Like, I would love to just talk to Corey off air about it and just be like, do you really not think Dave's... Like, just be honest with me. Do you really not think he's funny? Like, when Dave's trying. When he's fucking around in the clubs... On stage. Yeah, on stage. On stage. I'm yeah. saying when he's fucking around in the clubs, that's one thing. But, like, when he's actually trying, when he's doing bits, you don't think the bits are funny? No, I, when I, he's locked in, he's funny. That's the thing. I, I don't no, believe no, no, that no, Corey yeah, no, believes no, 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 that. No, no, yeah, that, yeah. yeah, yeah. When, when Dave's locked in, he's funny. Like, like I said, Sticks and Stones was hilarious. You know what I'm saying? When I saw him last year at the Garden... Hilarious. Yeah. You know, I, I actually saw him twice. I saw him at the Garden and I saw him at the North Charleston Coliseum. Hilarious. Yeah. When Dave's locked in on comedy, he's fucking funny. Yeah. And, and, and you can't say Dave sucked dick for movies, yo. The guy walked away for $50 million. Like Dave. A lot of people would suck dick for that. That's what I'm saying. And he just had to make sketches. And he walked away. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Dave is not the person that you should even put that tag on in any way, shape, or form. Right. I am 100% positive there's only a few people in the industry doing what they want to do because they want to do it, and Dave Chappelle is one of them. Dave yeah. Chappelle's not doing anything he does not want to do. Yeah, because you're in that position where you don't have to. Yeah. There are people who have to work, and there are people who have to create. That's right. And there are people who need to get views. That's right. And if they don't get those views, it drastically impacts their life. And those people, it's very difficult to know if what they're saying is what they feel or what they're saying is what pays the bills. Damn. Skip Bayless has to hate LeBron now. The bills get paid by hating LeBron. That's so stupid. But and Now, it is stupid, but now that Skip Bayless is just the highest example of it. So if you're... If you're one of these people who, let's say, for example, there's there are people who are just like creating these, uh, they got an account or something like that, and they're they're taking these points of view, but they're not monetizing it in any way, shape, or form. That's like their passion project. Mm -hmm. That's you might trust that they're not making any money on it. They don't care if it gets views or not. That's just what they want to do. They just paint pictures and they just post them somewhere. It is what it is. But once you are profiting off of something, and you need that money in yeah. order to pay the bills and support your lifestyle. You could start to question the motive a little bit. And a lot of times they don't even realize it. They People just get so caught up in paying the bills. I'm sure that's what happened to the guys that worked at like Fox. I'm sure it's what happened to the guys that worked at MSNBC. It's mm -hmm. like, oh shit, uh, Rachel Maddow just gets a, a new contract for millions of dollars. And she knows that as long as she continues having these opinions, she'll continue getting You're viewers. scared to pivot. You scared to pivot, you but get, you got you get handcuffed to a position. Yeah, to me, to me, that's when you that's when you end up hitting that glass ceiling. And the reason I say of that course. is because, and you brought up Fox News, which is a great great example. And Skip Bayless could be a great example. But I think about Fox News, right? Remember when all of that shit happened with uh, the Dominion voting scandal, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. remember they were getting sued, and remember all of those text messages or whatever came out, and it was Tucker Carlson and Laura Ingram, and they were giving their real opinions about Trump. To me, if you get on your network and say that, that's way bigger than getting on and just going along to get along. Like, we expect, like, when you turn on Fox, you expect them to give you, you know, that, that right-leaning perspective and to be riding for Trump. But if you got on there and you saw them say, nah, 
he's a liar, or this, and you'd be like, whoa, now these people are, they're, they're really voices I can trust in a way. Same thing with Skip Bayless. If Skip Bayless gets on TV and goes, hey, man, LeBron ain't no Jordan, but other than that, I was wrong. So that's the thing. Like, like, he's one of the greatest to have a I, tr I trust like, the waiter that tells me, yo, the burger is trash. Don't get the burger. Now, if they tell me the spaghetti's great, I believe, believe it's them. great. So you need to have both sides. But if you are locked into one position, which is right. criticizing, and especially it's like it's like, for example, Skip Bayless, if he stops being entertaining, nobody will care about what he has to say because you don't believe that what he's saying is actually what he feels. But I don't believe him now. But but he's entertaining. So you not almost, anymore. Okay, fair enough. But there was a time where he's really entertaining. So you're at least looking at him like uh like a, it's almost like a comedian or something like that. You're like, I know he's going to say some wild shit, but I'm just going to lock in. You discredit your own opinion. Yes. By doing it. And that's why I think, I think like the audience, I think the people at home, they start to kind of figure it out. And if I've been watching you for so long, like somebody like Skip Bayless, now you look like an old curmudgeon who's always wrong. Yeah, nobody <laughs> takes Skip seriously. Like that's the thing. Wrong. He's a character. And I do, <laughs> yeah. It's, and I think that people are starting to realize it and that there is like a social media economy for this. But I think that people are starting to realize, oh, this is just how people get views. Yes. It's just what it's... Like TMZ isn't posting like the charitable donations that, I don't know, Chris Brown is making. But they will immediately po post anything horrible that Chris Brown does yeah. because there's more views in it. There's more clicks in it. It's We're so much disgusting. more drawn to the negativity. It's so disgusting. But, you know, I did, uh, I was on This Week, um, This Week ABC with uh, Jonathan Carl. And that's what I said at the end of the interview. I said, if I lie to people about Democrats, then they won't believe me when I what tell them the truth about that? Republicans. Because I'm going I'm to speak the truth about Democrats, too. Because I feel like if you lie to people about Democrats, they won't believe you when you tell them the truth about yeah. Republicans. So if I lie to people about what I see with Joe Biden, they're not going to believe me when I tell them the truth about what I see with Donald Trump. So all you gotta do at this point, and I hate to say this, but why do we keep having to say this? Pick your poison. One poison might send you to the hospital for a couple of days. Yeah. The other one's gonna absolutely kill you. That's true. That's, That's a good a fact. Point. If, yeah. I, if I lie to them about Biden and this administration, yeah. they won't believe me when I tell them, look, what's coming in November. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? If Trump yeah. gets back in office. So I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm fine with it. But that's also you just having a responsibility to yourself. It's like you want your words, you want your words to have power. Yes. And you want people to trust what you say. Yes, and in man. order for them to trust what you say, you got to have a real opinion about that's shit. That's right. You can't just be on a side. Like, Stephen A. Smith is still Stephen A. Smith because, number one, Stephen A. Smith is still right about a lot of things. He said LeBron ruined the fucking dunk contest. And he had a great argument for it. I, I And I sort of agree. Well, regardless if you agree or not, it's that he will go at him and then he'll yes. also defend him. Like, yes. he's willing to actually have his own opinion and his own point of view. Yeah, I, I think what he was trying to—I I don't want to say what he was trying to say. To me, what I took from it was LeBron not participating in the slam dunk contest made it to where superstars don't have to be in exactly. the slam dunk contest. If LeBron was in it, they would be in it. It's, that's but right. when they see LeBron not do it, they're that's like, oh, right. I got to do this that's shit. That's right. Like, Kazayan, Ja, all these people who can jump out the gym— have not done it because LeBron James never did it. Every year it should be Zion versus Ja for the next four years. At least the next four years, absolutely. Like it, it, just Same like way it was, was Jordan Dominique. Thank you, absolutely. Thank you. Simple as that. So now, I, if the league wants to, they could. They don't have. They, I don't want to say mandate it, but they could basically pull him aside and say, "Hey, the sport needs us. The weekend need the, needs us. Will you help?" us I think out? LeBron's bigger than the league, though. No, no, he's not. Not even close. Nobody's ever bigger than the league, Chris. They they want that game to be competitive. LeBron's the one who's putting here, out the word. Here's the word. thing, Chris. He can't be bigger than the league because if he leaves basketball, he can't go anywhere. I'm That's not fair. watching That's Euro fair. basket. Yeah, you're right. No. Um, you know what I mean? There's like nobody uh, bigger than the league. LeBron ain't are they bigger than How about they're scared of him? How about that? I don't think they're scared of him. I, I don't, don't think I, he, I, he I chose think, not to participate. I also think they don't care that much about the weekend. Like, they act like they care about All-Star Weekend. They don't give a fuck. Like it, it looks so goofy, man. Right. It's like, what is all these? These the floor looks stupid, the lights look stupid, the balls look stupid. Like everything is dumb. It's everything but the game. But also, that's why the slam dunk contest isn't Thanks. what it used to be. Yo, this is how you motivate Even the players the to play. Suck. What? Even the game suck. Well, here's the thing. This is how you motivate the players to play. What do players want? Pussy. Put some <laughs> pussy in the stands. I'm being dead ass. Yeah. Like if you got. 
older rappers that these young kids don't really care about. Like, I don't get me wrong. Our generation, we love Fat Joe. Our generation, he's a fucking legend, an icon. These 20-year-old NBA kids don't even know who the fuck Fat Joe is. So they going to see Fat Joe in the front row and a bunch of older legacy rappers. They don't care if they get crossed over in front of them. You know who they don't want to get crossed over in front of? Who is the dude right now? Nah, nah, the girls. Well, no, I think it's I think it's actors they admire, beautiful women that they want to fuck. That they want to fuck. Yeah. And then the rappers that they really are wanting to impress. And then they're gonna go out there and they're not gonna want to get crossed over. They're gonna want to cross somebody else over. They're gonna want to dunk in people's faces. It's not gonna be playoff defense, but it's gonna be higher level. But right now they're balling in front of people they don't give a fuck about. I agree with that. I also think that they, they play should, harder at the Drew League. They they should Son the Drew has got you know what I mean? Yeah. They they should make it to where whoever wins the All-Star game, that conference gets a uh, home court advantage in the finals. They do that, I thought. They do? They did something with that. Uh, they do that in baseball, I think. Oh. Oh, that's baseball? Yeah. They should do that in the NBA. But most of them aren't going to be in the finals anyway, so they wouldn't care. Nah. What you, I mean, but it don't matter. It's just a Western Conference. Like, like the top teams, like Denver... Uh, who else? The fucking, who else was in the fucking, I mean, oh yeah, everybody that's in the top team had an all-star. Everybody that's potentially going to be in the finals has an all-star player. At yeah, least. but they're not really thinking they're going to make it. Like, the teams know they're not making it very quickly. <laughs> I mean, because the all-stars are the best in the world. I'm going to tell you something else with the slam dunk contest. Physically. Physically, I'm just talking about physical. There's just certain, there's just not, but so there's only but so much the human body can do. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? This ain't NBA jams. We probably have seen the best dunks. Oh yeah, yeah. We're like, a little bit, we're a little bit atrophied with our interest in humans it. haven't evolved in that way. Like you know, yeah. when Vince Carter was putting the ball between his legs and shit like that. Like Dr. J jumping from the free throw line. Michael Jordan kissing the rim. Like. I know we all watch NBA jams and we watch these video games. Humans aren't capable of doing those type of things yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all it is. You could make an argument that the the video game has changed our expectation for what we can achieve on the court. Like in the way like Tony yes. Hawk Pro Skater made us think we could do crazier tricks yes. than you actually can do on a skateboard. And then when you saw the skateboarding competitions, you're like, oh, yeah. this shit ain't nothing like Tony Hawk Pro yes. Skater. If I was in the NBA, if these guys don't want to participate, make it, they got to make it their due diligence to go find the people who are doing dunks we've never seen before. Mm. Like Yo. these kids at the Drew League, these kids at the And One Games, these kids on YouTube, go find the people who are doing shit we've never seen before and sponsor them for the slam dunk contest. And because they, there's nobody in the NBA right now who physically can do the unbelievable shit that we want them to do. What if they did one-on-one -on -one tournament, uh, three dribbles? What do I mean? Hmm. So you're only allowed three dribbles. This is how the players play like one-on-one -on -one when they're like in practice and shit. Okay. You only allowed three dribbles, and uh, you you they play one-on-one. -on -one. Now you're going up one-on-one. -on -one, your ego's involved. Mm. It's easy to lose a game when you're playing with eleven other dudes. Mm. When you're playing one-on-one. -on -one, and you get crossed over or you get beat 6-0, like, that's a problem. Mm. So that's the other thing. It's like these guys are doing the crazy dunks. We don't even know who the fuck they are. You I need the names, yo. We out here for the names. I have no... You got to have the names. I don't even know who this is. I thought this was... Oh, the, I, I thought the it's, Knicks traded Toppin. That's his brother. Oh, that's his brother. Yeah, I think so. It's a crazy name, Toppin. <laughs> Yeah. They need to condense it to two days. You got gay ears, yo. <laughs> you do got gay ears, ears yo. Yeah, you said condense it to two days? No, games? condense it to two two days. Like, to stretch it out for three days, they're doing all these extra shit that nobody only, cares about. I thought about. it was only two days now. Nah, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. What was Friday? They do, like, um, oh, Friday, the Friday, celebrity. Celebrity How y'all ain't had Gilly in the Celebrity All-Star game is beyond me, yo. Yo, yeah. Gilly can ball, yo. Y'all well, keep playing with Gilly. Nah, it's not only Gilly can ball. It's like he's already done so much marketing for himself. Yeah. So like, okay, so I look at this shit a couple ways. He's already created viral moments with challenging people. He's created viral moments playing himself. Yeah. There's already an intrigue in Gilly playing basketball, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And... Playing against pros, you put him in the you put him in the game. There are going to be people that can't wait to see him cook That's somebody. Right. He won 
MVP two years in a row with the big three. I think that's why they didn't put him in. Oh, the big three thing. Oh, he was the doing NBA the big three. Big shit. three, they beefing. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's possible. I mean, they had some. I, I don't even know who they. I don't even know who's going on. What's going on in the celebrity basketball game? I don't remember. Yeah. Only person I remember was Kai Sinai and Michael Parsons. Yeah. That's all. I literally, I'm not even joking. I watched the game and I only remember Kai Sinai and Michael Parsons. I was, I was, because I wasn't invested, invested like that, bro. It's one of those things that maybe it's just we're older, but like it's really falling off in that. I remember being younger, going like, "Man, I want to be in the celebrity all star yeah. basketball game. <laughs> or that, that's gonna be the coolest thing ever." And now. It's like, all right, I guess it's fine. Like I was paying attention more than who's on the sidelines. 50 Cent, Lil Wayne, Asia Wilson. Um, what's the other young lady from the Vegas, the Las Vegas Aces? Kelsey Plum? Mm. That's her name? Y'all hate women. Let's pay some bills. <laughs> Why we hate women just because we don't know <laughs> exactly. who they are? Ain't that their fault? We don't know who they are? I do know her. I think I said her name <laughs> you right. You ain't know it? Yeah, Kelsey Plum. That is her name. Kelsey Plum. But they got to make me know. Let's pay some bills, Taylor Gang. Wait, you better get him riled up. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta make me know. Like it's your job, right? Or no? Salute to Vessi. Uh, let's talk about Vessi. When navigating the city during rush hour, Vessi, that's our trusty companion, okay? Their waterproof technology and comfortable fit make every commuter breeze, especially on those rainy days and snow days with slush piles up around the city. They ensure dry and comfortable feet no matter the weather. Definitely check out their Storm Burst boots. It's a winter essential. Their robust build keeps your feet warm and dry even in the coldest, wettest conditions. The Dima Tech technology in Vessi shoes means I'm always ready for unexpected weather shifts, rain or shine. They've got me covered. The removable insoles in my Vessi shoes allow for personalized comfort. They adapt to my feet's needs, ensuring maximum support. Vessis aren't just shoes. They're a lifestyle enabler. From work to play, they keep up with my busy schedule without missing a beat. If you're like me and you want to be ready for anything, rain or shine, head to Vessi.com slash idiots to get 15% off your entire purchase. That's V-E-S-S-I dot com slash idiots. For 15% off your entire purchase. Free shipping to Canada, the United States, Australia, Japan, Chris's homeland, Taiwan, mm, Korea, yeah. and Singapore. And also, I got to salute DoorDash. Thank you, DoorDash, man. Who doesn't love DoorDash, okay? You want more from your delivery? You can get it with Dash Pass by DoorDash. Dash Pass is the most affordable way to get anything in your area delivered to your door, helping you save money and time with every DoorDash order. You know what else I'm realizing with DoorDash? What's when you're out of town, especially when we're out of town, because, you know, my daughter will be having a competition, DoorDash, to me, seems like they have more options as far oh, as really? restaurants. I could be wrong. But I feel like that. So you end up using DoorDash more. We end up using DoorDash more. I have DoorDash on my phone right now. With $0 delivery fees and lower service fees on eligible orders, Dash Pass makes it easy to save on restaurants, groceries, retail items, and all your local favorites that deliver on DoorDash. Dash Pass pays for it itself in two orders on average, making delivery even more worth it. Plus, Dash Pass gives you special access to exclusive promotions and member-only menu items, all for only $9.99 a month. Get more! From delivery for less, sign up for Dash Pass today only on DoorDash. Use code IDIOTS24 and get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass. That's code IDIOTS24 for 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass. Subject to change, terms apply. Let's get back to the show. Shows, you got some church announcements? Yo, um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have some church announcements. Talk to me. Um, obviously, the Life Tour, man. The Life Tour. I'll see you guys very soon. Uh, next up is uh, Philly, man. Thank you guys so much for selling out the shows. We just added shows in Nashville. We added a show in Phoenix, Austin, and Houston. Go get those. And I think we added another one in Charlotte. So go check those out. TheAndrewSchultz.com. And uh, cool announcement coming up. Thank you guys so much for grabbing all those tickets already. Appreciate y'all. Peace. Yeah, man. I just want to tell y'all, uh, make sure y'all go out there and grab Invisible Generals, man, by my man Doug Melville. Uh, that was the last release off my book imprint, Black Privilege Publishing. Um, 
fantastic read. It tells the amazing true story of America's first black generals, Benjamin O. Davis Sr. and Jr., a father and son who helped integrate the American military and create the famous Tuskegee Airmen. I mean, the reception to Invisible Generals has been incredible. Uh, we got some really, really special announcements coming really soon, man. And uh, salute to Alice Randall. Alice Randall, her book, My Black Country, A Journey Through Country Music's Black Past, Present, and Future. I'm looking at it right now. It is a top new release uh, on Amazon, and it doesn't come out until April 9th, but you can pre-order it now. You know, it's the next release off my book in print, Black Privilege Publishing with Simon & Schuster. Alice is a uh, professor at Vanderbilt, and she is the first black woman to write a number one country song. She wrote a song for Trisha Yearwood called XXX's O's, O's, O's. And um, it's just amazing how it's just all of this conversation swirling around about black music. I mean, black, black people and their place in country music. And this book is coming out, My Black Country, uh, April 9th, but you can pre-order it now. And salute to Beyonce. She has the number one country song in the world right now on Billboard. Mm, smart. With Texas Hold'em. And she has the number two song in the country, period. Uh, she couldn't beat Jack Harlow. You know, hard to beat a white man in America with a song that got whips and chains in it. Okay? <laughs> right? <laughs> well, salute to Jack. <laughs> right? Jack said on the song, I don't want no whips and chains. You think, Jack? <laughs> What else was Jack supposed to say? What is, was Jack supposed to say, I just love these whips and chains? <laughs> <laughs> what else was Jack supposed to say? But he got the number one song in the country, man. He and does. He does for a couple weeks now. He no way. Go. Jack is very talented. I fuck with Jack. Beyonce is number two. How does Beyonce not have the number one song? She has the number one country song oh. in, the, in the country, but not the number one song overall on Billboard. She's got number two. Perfect example of what we were talking about earlier. All the haters of Beyonce made that song go number one, and all the fans of Beyonce made that song go number one. Mm. Because when you're as beloved as Beyonce, and you put out a commercial during the Super Bowl, most watched Super Bowl ever, by the way. Uh -huh. Over 200 million people saw it. You put this commercial out. You drive people to go listen to the new music. You're so beloved, everybody's going to go listen. But you know what carried that song to number one? The hate. Oh, I love the fact the that you people, can monetize the hate. The people who are like listening to it just to shit on it. Mm. The John Snyders of the world. Bo from Dukes of Hazard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mad at the record. All of these different people who posted about it and said Beyonce is trying to infiltrate country music. All of this shit. Y'all made that record number one. Yeah. Just like a couple weeks ago, the Barb's made Hiss. By Megan Thee Stallion number one. Oh, because they were hating on it. You Ooh. hate on it, man. Listen, when, when you're below, the people that support you are going to go listen to it. And that's the people a, that hate you are going to go listen to it. That's an interesting argument. And, and yeah. the algorithm don't know no better. Yeah. The algorithm don't give a fuck. <laughs> so you could, use, you could use the haters with music. I feel like that's what everybody does. Well, especially with music, you see a lot of people like uh, invoking rage with like the religious community. That's right. You know, they play with uh, devil outfits and uh, devil worship, and all of a sudden the Christians go, how dare you That's do right. this shit? And they do all your promo for them. I think Tommy Lauren used to do that perfectly with the black community. Perfectly. She would, like, enrage the black community on Twitter. I wrote about that in my second book. You did. I called it the Tommy Tsunami. The Tommy Tsunami. <laughs> I did. And black people can't... No. <laughs> <laughs> it is do the same for Lil Nas X. What? We hate it. It right, does dude. do the same for Lil Nas We're X. What are you talking about? I, I haven't seen the thing, thing like it goes to number one. Man, now. Lil Nas X is Lil Nas X because of the hate. Yeah. He's because found the, a way to monetize the hate brilliantly. Now, 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 I will say about Lil Nas X, and I'm, I mean this respectfully... Okay. I don't know if he has. <laughs> I don't know if he has real gay fans. Guy. <laughs> Why? Because I don't know people who really he's a like big old little gay guy. Stop. Man, no, <laughs> I like his music. You like you like it, like yeah. it. Okay, I understand right. what you're saying. That he over indexes in uh, the way that people talk about him. And then maybe under indexes in how many fans are actually going out to his shows. Yeah. So like for a guy who's as insanely popular and famous as Lil Nas X is, he might not be able to do a show where 3,000 people are there. Name three songs. Oh, no, I could do that. that. Okay. Go ahead. Um, the country that... The first of course, song. Old Town Rose. Oh, big song ever. 
Champions, I believe it's called. That's my shit. Like that's my favorite And I liked his other song he had with the devil. What's I'm a devil. I'm a devil. I'm a no, devil. I'm a devil. He would dress no, as a devil. Doja. No, he he like has sex with the devil or something like that. I'm I forgot what it's called though. I don't think you even know that song. I think you know the imagery. I, no, <laughs> no, I, I don't think you know that song. Sing it. I do it. Sing it. I don't think you know that song. Don't Google it. I think you know the imagery. I don't remember how it goes. That's what the country road. No, that's not country road. No, you're thinking about. I'm talking about champions. I told you love. Okay, that's hard. I didn't even know that was in the. I got what they waiting for. Yeah. I fuck with Lil Nas X. I met him. We interviewed him. I thought he get guys has great conversation, but I don't know if he has. They just are mad at the trolling. But yeah, and I don't know if he has that also, musical fan base. See, the reason yeah. it works for Beyonce, the reason it works for Megan, because they have a musical fan base. If right. you have a musical fan base that's already going to check for your music, yeah. you're already going to get that support. But right. when you get the haters going to listen and pushing people to listen, it's a tsunami every I time. I thought he had the musical <laughs> it's Mayweather. fan base at once. Mayweather had people rooting against him when he was fighting, but they right. paid the same price of admission. Yeah. They paid the same price for the pay-per-view. So if you can monetize your haters, you're a fucking genius. If you ever read Howard Stern's book, Private Part, to see in the movie, what did they say? The people, people that who... love him, listen, but the people that hate him, listen twice as much. Now, I don't believe that. I do. But I... I, I don't believe you can hate listen to someone for two hours. Like, I think you actually do love them. You, you like them. Yeah. You're an admirer. You love. You're, you an, love. you're an admirer. You, well, you might love to argue with this person. You might hate his opinions, but love to argue you with love him. him. You I can't, love that. Yo, listen, it's podcast, radio. These are things that you cannot not love because they're too long. You could watch a clip for somebody for like 60 seconds, right? And you could be like, I don't like this person. You could watch more clips. But hours and hours of podcasts. To be invested for years. You love that person. Yo, there's some of y'all out there. You love me. Nah, for real. Like, but it's facts. No, 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 no. It's, no think look, about it. Think, think, go, say it, say it. You love you know, no, Say it, say it. No, no, no. no, there's, no. There's, 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 there's two people and I'm not on Twitter, so I don't ever see it. But people will be like, oh, you trending on Twitter. I don't even give a fuck for what. But whenever people do send me stuff from people on Twitter, it is two people. One in particular, I commend you. The reason I commend you, you've been hating me since 2009. So that's the thing. But like, you don't hate me. You love me. But that's the thing. I don't believe <laughs> in that scenario. I don't believe they hate you because no. you cannot hate somebody. Since 2009? Since 2009, and then listen to them for eight hours a week. Yes, and pick apart everything they say. You can't hate. No, no, you love that person. Now you just happen to. So here's the thing. You love that person. Now you just maybe are getting views and clicks from hating on that person. But to me, if you hate somebody, stop listening. Stop listening. Stop watching. Stop listening. Now, if you cannot stop yourself from listening and watching, you love if me. you physically are incapable of <laughs> stopping yourself <laughs> from listening and watching, <laughs> yep, get there. Get there. You love them. You want to scream. You want a nut. You want the you fucking want the nut. nut. You don't want to Because you're coming back that. every week. Every week, man. Every week you're coming back. Every week. Now, or, or... Or maybe you do hate them, but the only way you could get views is with the hate. Skip Bayless LeBron. The only yeah. way that you can rile up the internet. Yeah. And now you might not love him, but you're his prisoner. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know yeah. You, yeah, you're right. And and, and some of y'all just listen. It just it just discredits their criticism because if you if you didn't love somebody, you would stop right. watching. But if you can't stop watching, you love them. That's right. So you cannot tell me you don't love them. Yeah, hey, hey, even now, it's like yo, you can't y'all can't spend every week bashing it, me about something. It doesn't make sense. You love me. You love it's love. You love me. Especially love. some of my sons. Some of y'all are my sons. Hmm. And I know you upset because daddy's been neglecting you. Yo, it's facts. <laughs> you, but, you know what I'm saying? It's love. And it's, it, but don't it's be like that. It's the definition of love. If a dad was at That's every right. single basketball game, every right. single basketball game a dad showed up, would you believe that dad didn't love his kid? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I'm just saying, if it went, went, listen, my dad was at every basketball game. Everybody's like, yo, he loves him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. loves him. Yeah. If a dad is at every single game, that's, that's right. love. You that's love. Right. That's right. That's right. I it's love, commitment. I love all my sons regardless of how, no matter how y'all talk hey, about hey, daddy. Hey, Charlotte, Charlotte. <laughs> they love you too. I know they do. Yo, they could prove they Yo. don't, hey, watch it. They could prove they don't love you by never saying anything Stop. again. Exactly. But wait, wait, wait a minute. Exactly. <laughs> Will they? 
That's right. Don't mention daddy's <laughs> no, name no, no. ever again. They can't. Do no, that, they Sean. can't. They can't. Sean, they can't. They can't. That. They can't. Matter of fact, because they need to eat. Whenever you hear my sons talking about me, hey, your sons is hungry. That's right. <laughs> Yo, your sons are hungry. <laughs> and, they need to eat. That's bro. right. And I would never tell you eat a dick. You know what I'm saying? I will always be here. <laughs> Listen, next time you hear my sons talk about me, just go in their comments and put daddy's, daddy's not coming home. Daddy's, <laughs> daddy's never coming home. <laughs> but you know what? Yo, but your sons love you so much, they're going to find you. That's right. They won't accept no, no, that daddy's no, not coming say, home. They're going to find you. Put daddy's coming home soon. Daddy, daddy will be home soon. Daddy's coming home. Daddy soon. will be home Relax, soon, man. It's okay. That's the thing. That's why I don't. I don't believe any of this shit. If you listen every week and you got the same criticism every single week, I think you like it. Especially you those, like those things. That's right. Because you're coming back. Think about all, and also too. If a girl says she didn't like your dick and she kept calling you every <laughs> single week, what would you say? Would you believe her or not? A girl goes on Twitter, yo, his dick is trash, calls you every, every single weekend. Every single day. Every, every weekend you coming over gets to get her the... shit blown open. Well, and then the next week, yeah, his dick is trash, calls again. But dick is trash, he, calls again. He might just love him. Taylor. 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 That's the thing. Oil up your <laughs> no, no, she just said it. She just said it. She just said it. She might just love him. Exactly. Taylor don't even know what she said just now. I know. No. She just made no. the point. Just, yeah, she loved that I Taylor. Know. That's exactly. I'm just saying, if you don't like somebody, you if you truly didn't like anybody, you just wouldn't watch. If you truly don't like. You just like, wouldn't listen. If you truly don't like. But you like, can't not watch or listen. If you That's love, bro. Get off my dick. That's love. Hey, bro. You can't. Hey. You know why? Hey, why? Because it's good. It's good. <laughs> that like dick good. Riding this dick. Woo! Hey, yo, 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 right now they're like, should, should, should we make a video? Hey, should no, we respond? Like, they're thinking about it. I like, opened my mouth. If I respond, I'm admitting I'm riding the dick. You made that noise. <laughs> I'll wait a week. You made that noise and I opened my mouth and it looked like I did it. <laughs> like, do it again. Watch, watch, watch. Wait, I, what noise did I make? You screamed. Oh, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying the logic don't add up. Bro. It don't add up, man. You fucking love us. Let's pay some bills, Taylor Gang. Hey, yo, thank you, Squarespace. Man, we got a salute Squarespace. They've been riding with Brilliant Idiots for a long time, man. And we sub thank you for supporting this week's episode of the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. You already know Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage your audience, and sell anything, your products, content you create, and even your time. Upload, organize, and access all your content from one place. With the new asset library, you're able to manage all your files from one central hub and use them across the Squarespace platform. Get started with one of our professional website templates with designs for every category and use case and customize your look, update content, and add features to fit your unique needs. You can make any Squarespace template do what you want. So your idea, brand, or business stands out online on every device. Use insights to grow your business, learn where your site, business, and sales are coming from, and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords and most popular products and content. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because I got to tell you about the hardest dicks in America, okay? And it's the ones that are chewing it up, the blue chew, okay? Same active ingredient that's inside Viagra Cialis, but this is the chew. This is the one that we rock with. This is the one you get back sticky with. You already know what time it is, and it can be delivered to your doorstep. And you know what? We're going to give you the first month free. All you got to do is pay the $5 shipping. When you go to bluechew.com, use that promo code IDIOTS. That's right. First month free, $5 shipping. Best dick your girl ever got in her life. You are welcome. Now, let's get back to the show. All right. Let's do some asking idiots, man. Let's get it. You had a lot to say about this. Well, what? The lady getting arrested for the daughter. Wait, what happened with this? Well, the lady got arrested because she had her five-year-old in there doing waxes. She was doing waxes on, on women's vaginas. You didn't see that video? Really? <laughs> Here's the wild thing about it, though. I don't That's know why crazy. everybody's like, yo, she shouldn't have been arrested. There's this thing called child labor laws, y'all. Hmm. Okay? The kid was five. <laughs> right? Not, not, never mind the fact that she's in there doing such a hazardous job waxing people's vaginas. You know who else is weird? The people who let the five-year-old yeah. do it. That They're even weirder than the fucking 
anybody. In this yeah, situation. this is fucking absurd. Five years old. And what was the price different? <laughs> well, I mean, the, was it like, the mom what, was. What, I what, like, what? <laughs> Could they get into the nooks and crannies question. or something like that? Like, the what was the trying That's a valid to question. show that he was trying to show her how to make money? Basically, I guess at five, to... man, start a lemonade stand like normal fucking people, <laughs> man. Guess. Yeah, like, not not a goddamn ripping pubes stand. out of. Oh, dude! And they called it Jiffy Pube. Stop it! Yes. <laughs> just saying the word discharge is just so fucking good. Jiffy Pube. Oh God! <laughs> Pancake batter falling out of women. <laughs> Asking idiots, Taylor gang. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we need some asking idiots, Taylor. Come on, Taylor gang. All right. Uh, Sean Don NW says, is there anything someone has said to you in the past that was negative that still affects you? Man. Um, Up until a couple weeks ago. I mean, Bo see, Bunky knows used to sting, yo. Got you. Oh, man, that was a good one. In seventh grade. That shit killed Because it's you know? like, yo, you're saying that a person has an ass on their face. But an ass doesn't come out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what made it so crazy. And this was like before the era of like, don't get me wrong, we always like girls with nice bodies, but I was in seventh grade, so we wasn't really looking for the asses yet. Yeah. So them calling me bunky nose in seventh grade, like you saying my nose looks like a fat ass? Yeah. Like Trina? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like jail? So like, like literally the whole ass and the cheeks is what they're saying. Yes. Got it. And it was the way it used to be said. <laughs> bunky nose. Like, oh, it was a jingle. Bunky, bunky nose. nose. So it was said with like affection, but then also like an insult. Hey, did you ever sneeze and shit fell out? <laughs> <laughs> I just wipe your fucking nose. Oh yeah, what do you mean wipe my nose? So that killed you. <laughs> Bunky nose stuck with me for a long time. Like, cause you know, every now and then I just be sleeping and you just wake up. Bunky nose. I'm like, fuck, I'm 45. <laughs> what the, like, what the fuck? Am I still waking up hearing Bunky nose? Well, that was in seventh grade. I'm telling you, man, that's Bunky Bunky nose might have made me who I am. Yeah. There you go. Because I I wanted people to feel the pain I felt. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so, I, so I had to give them names that stuck to That's your ribs. villain arc? Yes. Like, that's why when you got to think of names, stuff that sticks to people's ribs. Like, yeah, yeah. And when you make it a jingle. Oof. 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 Bunky nose. Like, jingles rip. What's the best jingle disc you put together? I don't want to say it. <laughs> I don't want to say it. Can we bleep it? We can believe it, but I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it just because it's just happened so. It's, I'm so past that, but... <laughs> dance to it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People still say that to him now. That's why he shits on me in the clubs to this day. No way. Hey, man. It's some people I know for a fact are never going to ever, 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 ever forgive me. And they shouldn't. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and they really shouldn't. All right? <laughs> but that was a good one. Why did Bo was it the name Bunky? They said like just big nose. You wouldn't care. That shit don't slap. Uh, stuff like that don't slap. When you call somebody just fat, eh? Yeah, but when you say you part of the big back brigade, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just gotta be creative. They used to call me Twinkie, bro. Oh man, that shit used Why? to get me. Why? <laughs> I used to be chubby. Oh really? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. When I was younger, when I was a kid. I liked that. Yeah, Twinkie's kind of cool shit. now. Yeah, that is All right, I keep playing. Keep playing. Bunky knows. You can't say Bunky. That's not gay. All right, Bunky. All right. Somebody walking through like, all right, okay, Bunky. Like, damn, you checking me out. I'm trying to think a thing that they said that really fucked me up. Makes up for your nails then, though. Oh, why I, no, why are you it, taking it, shots, yo? No, it wasn't a joke. <laughs> it was the Jordans, right? The Jordans. The Jordan shit killed me. That shit brought Andrew to his knees. Oh, when that you shit. wore the same ones every single week. That's all I could afford, yo. That's all I could afford, man. I had. I thought There's I was killing it with two pairs. There's nothing else. I, I had black and blue and black and red. Yeah. I was like, yo, there's no fit that doesn't go with this. <laughs> yo, There's that should kill me. Now? What you Y'all been said that. There's nothing else that's hurt traffic. Well, that. once you get made fun of on the internet for like about a decade, you start to become a little bit desensitized to it. <laughs> and by the way, nothing hits like the shit in school. Yeah, when you're younger, it's hey, better. Hey, there's nothing anybody said to me in my adult life that ever stuck with me the way shit said was said in school. School is when you become ruthless. <laughs> 
Like school is when you really realize I'm going to get rid of every fucking body. You're either gonna do two things. Oh Learn to do great jokes <laughs> and shoot the motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. right? Put your mic right here. One bro. of the two. You either gonna get mass jokes or a mass shooting. Oh All right. God. Okay, no, seriously. <laughs> no, he's making a good point. That's the truth. That's Yo, why, like, these do you think these mass shooters have like the final joke that made them go, all right, fuck it, I'm gonna do it? Yes. And I wonder I'm, what it I was. I guarantee when you hear these kids talk about they were getting bullied. I we need to know who got it off, though. What was the last joke? <laughs> we need to know the last joke. Like, I need, yo. What, what's so, the one that drove you the over one? the edge? Because if somebody God went up to Boom Kino's and he said, all right, Shit. tomorrow, tomorrow's the day. <laughs> Shit. Um, if it's one thing you can get rid of completely in its previous existence, what would it be? Mass shootings. That's what Zay95 wanted to know. Mass shootings. Okay? Yep. Mass shootings. Facts. I would completely utterly get rid of that shit because I'm telling you those make it impossible to enjoy any true American experience nowadays. Oh, because you're worried that that's going to happen. I was at my daughter's cheerleading competition this weekend in Atlanta and I wasn't as worried as I have been previously because I'm telling you on my spiritual retreat I, I, I was just I, I You dealt with some shit. I dealt with some things so things I feel a little bit at ease and also just realizing Whatever's gonna happen, gonna happen, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's certain things that are just out of your control. Facts. So, what are you gonna do? Facts. What are you gonna do in that situation? So, but I, I would say, yeah, mass shootings is one thing I would absolutely get rid of. So, and Junior Solar Schultz, is there anything you want to do differently as a father than what your dad has done? That's a good question because I think my dad did just such a fucking phenomenal job. I would love to be able to do what he did. That would be the bar. For me, that's the bar. I'm sure there's going to be things that I do differently, but if I could be as committed and as supportive and as loving and as, like, egoless and kind, like, really just egoless and kind, I would be so happy. And that's a that's a tough thing to achieve, but that would be... That would be fucking awesome. I'm sure there's You're things I'll do it. different. I'm trying. You're doing it because you, you're right, right now. You got yourself on a schedule because you want to be home at a Six o'clock. I see that little girl. Same thing. I want to get home to make sure my kids, I put my kids to bed. You know? Uh, so facts. it's just like, I totally understand. So you're already on the right path. Trying, brother. All right. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. <laughs>